I will request uh, uh, Professor Ashir Ahmed, please uh, present your keynote. My name is Ashir Ahmed. I um, actually in Japan for the last 27 years. I went there when I was just 18 years old. So I um, studied my bachelor's, master's, PhD, then I worked in industry, then I came back again to the academia. So I'd like to share some of my experience before we hit into uh, a market in Japan. Um, I think uh, Mr. Mahabu Zaman rightly mentioned we need to understand each other. So I will um, address few of the issues that we need to know before we go capture or encourage attract Japanese market. My title, the slide that I want to talk about is engaging Japanese industries and academia. So mostly, um, Mahabub Zaman Sar mentioned about the industry. I will talk about the academia, how academia can also um, co-create some opportunity. It is not like we will look for some opportunities, they will be our um, job giver, we will just do some job for them, but I would like to mention how we can co-create something, some opportunities together. So this is something, my dream, if you look at this slide, Japan has been sort of like donor country for us. Can you really change this scenario to not a single arrow, but a double arrow? It means we have now a young generation that uh, the demographic dividend that um, Mao Zedong also mentioned, Young generation, technology, and business, three keywords really can change it. And I think this is the right time we can do it. Um, just give you one example. When you talk about ICT, the ICT that is used in developed countries like Japan and the way we use it in developing countries is totally different. So they really don't understand our requirement, we don't understand their requirement. So how can we really design something together? The challenge is the following. I give this example, I think it's little, it doesn't really show very well, but the key essence point is, in Japan, if you look at the social issues they have, in every sector, you talk about healthcare, you talk about education, you talk about the banking industry, they already have the infrastructure. So the way they use ICT in the top of that infrastructure, they use ICT to make it more efficient. But for developing countries like us, we don't have that information. So we have to think out of the box. Like for an example, the mobile money transfer. In Japan, they already have ATMs, they have the bankings in every single corner of the country. They don't have to invent mobile money transfer. But look at our country. It's, we have 98% mobile um, network coverage, almost like everyone. If you look at the number of population that mobile phone, we have, we have more mobile phones than Japan. We are ninth in the rank, Japan is in the 10th. So if you look at the growth, and this is the opportunity, and this is why we developed money transfer by using the infrastructure that we have. The infrastructure is the mobile coverage. So mobile phone coverage. So all the infrastructure that we can develop before the um, physical infrastructure is available, we can go with the mobile phone. So we need more ICT than, than the developed countries. So can we co-create that? Japan has the technology, we have the requirements, and we have the market here, not in Japan. So I think this is the opportunity how we can build something together. Let's give you some example. Look at this world. We have 7.3 billion people. Almost like half of the population is still poor. One point one seventh of the population is still um, don't have the access to education. They cannot read to write. We have 1.5 million children that die of diarrhea. Diarrhea is a disease that we invented the technology almost like 50 years ago. Fortunately, in Bangladesh, we know the technology how to make, you know, if you have available water, sugar, and um, some sort of salt, then you know how to make this, you know, guta guta, and you have the saline. And this is the way you can save the children. But how about the other countries? They don't have the technology. WHO made, um, a survey why we are losing 1.5 million children a day, one year. If you divide it by 365, it will give you 4,000. It means we are losing 4,000 children in one day. Can we save them? It is, this problem is highly ignored, but we are not really talking about this. And the problem was, 
the right information was not right in the right place. That was the finding. The mothers were asked, what do you do when you have diarrhea, your children diarrhea? Do you stop liquid or do you continue liquid? 35% of the mothers, they asked, they stop liquid. So the problem is other side. But now this is the um, um, generation or this is the environment that we have. Almost everyone, 7.3 billion people, we have 6 billion mobile phones. So we can, it is our responsibility now, how we can transmit the right information in the right place. So today I will talk, give three scenarios, like how the industry, academia can play together. Academia is something we look for new research themes. And uh, industry, they want to develop technologies, or they, pro they, they build it from the prototype to, to a product. And the government is the one who needs uh, continuous support from the academia and industry. So how can you make an alliance? And Japan is one of the countries that really did a very good job align, uh, making an alliance between the academia, industry, and um, uh, the government. So this is the model they, they, they do. Government has some fund. They, do, they have social issues. They know what the requirements in their country. And um, they have uh, uh, different ministries to promote their science and technologies. So government is the uh, organization who uh, pours money to the academia. Academia uh, uh, work with the industry. And uh, academia produce ideas. They produce prototypes. The industry, they build products. And they supply it to the, to the society. This is how it works. Um, in another sense, when you do outsourcing, we can build a lot of programmers. You can give one single dollar. If you can produce some group leaders, you can get two dollars. I mean, two dollar mark, two digits. If you can b build some project managers, you can get you know three dollars, three cents of dollars. So uh, I think from now on, researchers are on the top. So they can one theme, one single problem we can find and we can design. Then we can produce like multiple number of this kind of hierarchies of people. So we need programmers, we need group leaders, we need project managers. We should create all of them, not only programmers. So in order to co-create, I think the uh, academic researchers, we need to have some social issue-based research themes. In Right in this country, we have a lot of social issues. So can we encourage our teachers, our researchers, our the professors who teach technologies to the students, so they will have social issues in their mind. They will give the research thesis to the students so that their issues can be, can be studied and uh, rightly placed. So the collaboration between local and foreign academia, foreign academia are also looking for this kind of solutions and also they look for some research themes. Um, just I talk about theory, but in practice, I have created six big projects. Number one is Portable Health Clinic. It is based on our requirement in the society. You can imagine um, uh, in the rural areas in Bangladesh, we don't have doctors, we don't have hospitals. So how can you really solve the problem? Doctors want to stay in the um, uh, urban area. So we have invented some sort of a portable health clinic. I will show you a one minute video after that. And then on the right side, Toyota is working with us for the last six years. They, um, you can see Uber and other companies are coming in, this car sharing market, but it works only in urban area. But what is the scenario in the rural areas? Don't they need a car sharing models? So we are looking at what are the requirements. If you look at a community, if you look at the mobility, amount of mobility they make in rural areas, how, what kind of service can be provided from point A to point B? So this is the question we wanted to answer with Toyota. And we have excellent results. We have some uh, uh, prototypes in mind. I believe that it worked in Bangladesh. It will work in other countries. And by the support of JICA, we have created how to generate income for the poor farmers in the rural areas uh, successfully. It, it was finished by this year, last six years. Thank you, JICA, for supporting us with this project. So this is just one example that we have created a uh, portable health clinic. So you can imagine the rural areas, you have nothing. But in the culture in Bangladesh, we had a doctor who used to carry one suitcase and visit you know, doors after doors. So what we have done, we have just um, developed the box, putting some latest technologies. So the lady can go to 
um, the rural areas, they can digitize the data by using different type of sensors. Um, Mahabub Zaman mentioned about IoT devices. These are one of the IoT devices that we can use to collect the data and put it into a small tablet PC. And inside the tablet PC, we put some AI technology to determine your health status. So it puts in four different colors. So the red means risky and green means you are safe. So this is what a patient wants to know. And then the patient can talk to the doctor. Doctor can consult with them. They write the prescription and the prescription can be locally printed like this. So we have done it in Bangladesh. We have done it in India. Now we are going to Cambodia and Thailand. And this technology will be required in Japan 25 years later. So this is how technology can be developed in a foreign con uh, in developing country. And using the reverse innovation, we can introduce the same thing to other countries like that. Thank you so much. Thank you.